Olivier Blanchard, um, Chief Economist of the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. IMF. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the being here. Um, okay, I'm definitely going to start talking about Europe, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it's always different to talk with economists from America, from this side of the ocean, of what's happening over there, than you, that although you are in this side of the ocean, but you're French. So you have an intimate uh, knowledge of what's going on, uh, on there. And of course, the IMF, it's very, very involved with what's happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that my first question is, would be, as a French, as a French national, what's, what do you think? Are you, do you fear the situation over there? Do you think that it can get worse? Do you think it's going to end badly? It can get worse. It can get better. <laughs> I think there is. Uh, I think the change in the last year is that I think there starts to be a plan, a coherent plan for what's needed to to make the euro work. Uh, it has to be put in place, uh, and as we know, it's not very easy. And you have two steps forward, then one step back, or sometimes one step forward <laughs> and two steps back. I, I, I but I, yeah, I think there is a plan, and I think I think one can reasonably hope that it will it will work. Yes. There you go. That, 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 that last statement, that's the one that I was looking for. So you, as a French, as an economist, you think that at the end, everything should work out? Everything should work out. I think it can work out. I think we know what kind of policies are needed. It can be done. Now, what are we talking about when we say that it would work out? Um, it's it, can it work out with Greece outside the euro? I'm going to leave Greece out of the picture because it's a, it's a fairly hot topic and I just don't want to say anything about it. I think from a, uh, you know, just from a distance, the important thing is, is what happens to the big countries, to Spain and Italy, right? I think that's where, well, in the I, end, the action is. Actually, let me ask you, okay, let's, okay. I can, I, I guess we can avoid uh, name names, but uh, do you think there's a chance that any given country can actually exit or has a risk of exit zero? Is there a risk? I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to say that I think that uh, for, the, for the major countries, Spain, Italy, I think they can make it in the euro and the euro can work. Well, let me tell you this way. Let me ask you this way then. Uh, what do you need to see, what do we need to see happening in Europe to guarantee that everything stays together and everybody stays within the euro? Yeah. What is clear? is that the euro as it was constructed uh, was missing part. So either it goes forward, which I think it can and it will, or it goes back. But basically we are halfway, we're in the middle. So something has to happen. What we have learned is that the countries can be subject to really bad shocks and they can have a very hard time getting out of it alone. And so what's not in place, what was not in place is the help that they need in order to actually make it. So I think, so I think that's very much what the issue is for, you know, again, Spain, Italy, uh, the large countries. Sometimes, you know, a country, even if it tries hard, and it should, uh, cannot quite make it alone, has to make sure it can borrow at reasonable rates. That's what's needed. So this implies putting in place some institutions, you know, what people have been talking about, the banking union, the fiscal union. I think these are essential ingredients. But if they are put in place, it can work. What is it? What it's missing right now, and let me stress here that uh, uh, apparently all the analysis, all the, the, the coverage that I have been re reading are very positive towards what the IMF have been doing in Europe. So the IMF, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. up to now, has scored very good work over there. Thank you. Having said that, well, I'm not saying it, it's what yeah. I have read in yeah. this side of the ocean yeah. at least, but having said that, What's missing? What's what? What needs to be done? Who is, what institution? Who is not doing its homework well enough yet? Again, when you look at an MF program in general, so let's forget Europe for a moment, right? Mm. What happens? You have a country which is in trouble for some reason, right? So what the IMF does in a program, it goes there and it says, you know, what is it that you need to do on your own to actually get out of the hole, but given that markets are going to be fairly skeptical, at the beginning at least, we're going to provide the financing, right? That's the general idea, which is you do what you need to do and we'll make sure that you can kind of borrow at some reasonable rate. Now, think of Europe and don't think of IMF programs, right? It's exactly the same thing. Spain is in a hole, 
you know, it has a very large deficit, fiscal deficit, competitiveness issues, needs to deal with those, right? But as it does this, if it has to pay, you know, 10% interest, it's never going to make it, right? So the deal which has to take place, and this is mostly a deal between the Eurozone and Spain or Italy or whatever, right, is you do what you need to do and we'll just make sure that you can borrow at reasonable rates. So this is what's starting to be put in place. I think once it's in place, it's a go. Yeah. Uh, can you comment on the, on the role of Germany of Angela Merkel in here? No. Uh, but, in, you know, I think there's, at the more general level, there's, there's a strategy that uh, basically if you look at what's happening, so you look at Rajoy in, in Spain or you look at uh, Mario Monti in Italy, they are taking very strong measures, right, structural reforms, fiscal adjustments. So that part, I think, is there, right? Then the question is, what about the financing? So Mario Draghi has put in place something. Yeah. If, you know, the country is needed, they have access to that. So. Uh, and the Germans, you know, have agreed to all these things. So without saying anything specific about Merkel or anybody, uh, it's being put in place. What's your position on this debate, now debate between growth and, uh, and, uh, and uh, adjustment? That made, uh, you know what right. I'm talking about. No, um, look, I think one has to understand exactly what the issue is, and the issue is clear, which is these countries are at levels of debt which are so high that they are very dangerous. Right. You can have, suddenly the investors get scared, then the interest rate goes up, the interest bill goes up, the government cannot pay, this scares the market. So there's no question that we need fiscal consolidation. Basically, we have to decrease the level of debt. And the question is the speed at which we do it. Because what we've learned is that fiscal consolidation, as needed as it is, right, slows down demand, slows down growth. So what you have to do is do it you know, at the rate which doesn't kill growth. Because if you kill growth, if you do fiscal consolidation, you just go for it. You kill growth and things are worse. So I think the debate is not about fiscal stimulus versus fiscal consolidation. It's about the speed of fiscal consolidation, right? You have to do it at the right speed, which depends on, you know, on the particulars of each country. Not too fast, not too slow. But however, there has been a lot of critics or criticism in Spain and in Greece, which are the countries who have made the fiscal consolidation or the reforms, that the reform has been made too quick and therefore they're killing the growth. Is, so that, is that a fair criticism? I think you can argue that in some countries it was done a bit too quickly or not, right? There are constraints, which is that basically the more, the slower it goes, if you don't have access to markets, then you know the financing has to be provided. So given the constraints, the political constraints on the financing, it had to be quite aggressive in countries like Greece or Portugal. There was basically not much choice, right? But it's true that if you can go more slowly, uh, it's better, as long as it's credible. And the issue is with really the credibility. If you go too slow, then people, investors start saying, you know, these guys are not serious. Um, so, but there is no question that you know, it has to happen in Spain, and that's not good for growth in the short run. It's good for growth eventually, right? but uh, not in the short run. Which leads me to the, hopefully the last question on Europe. Uh, what about the social element? What about the social discontent? It's very important. I mean, that's, uh, you, know, you basically have to, just again, you have to do it at a speed which is politically feasible, which is socially feasible and you have to take care of the people who are affected the most. And there's no question. It, it's a very painful adjustment. And uh, you know, there are both social limits and political limits. If you try to do it too quick, you don't stay. All right? Somebody else comes. So I think these are constraints that have to be taken into account. OK, let's move on to Latin America. Um, what's the state of the... Uh, association, for not, for not saying relationship, between the IMF and Argentina, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, instance in which Argentina allegedly are uh, not using the correct numbers in, uh, in uh, inflation, the IMF has let them know about that, and uh, what's, what's, what's the situation right now? Look, we, we think that indeed the inflation numbers are probably not right. We've indicated we have problems with them. Uh, We've indicated that uh, you know, if there's a process at the IMF uh, when countries basically uh, do not follow some of the rules that we have, it's going on. We'll see where it goes. That's all I can say on that. Uh, what's going to happen from, from the IMF side if 
which is more likely. Argentina won't uh, uh, do anything about their uh, uh, management of numbers. Well, as you know, I mean, the answer to these questions is no, I don't deal with hypotheticals, so we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you will. Ms. Lagarde, but, but Ms. Lagarde has been more, I mean, she has uh, kind of uh, let it slip that probably uh, IMF is going to uh, 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 sever relations with, uh, with Argentina if that, con if that continues. Okay, that's okay. Whatever she has said. Okay. Uh, what's the major risk for the global economy right now in the, in the, for the next uh, 12 months? I think it's uh, Europe, but, you know, the scenario I've talked about doesn't uh -huh. take place and there's another crisis in Europe. We've seen a few. Each time it leads to an increase in in risk aversion, basically investors get scared, it has all kinds of effects on the world. Uh, growth could be worse in Europe, that has an effect on trade. So I think that's risk number one. Risk number two is the fiscal cliff in the US, mm. as you know. It's, it's not a joke, uh, it, you know, if it really happened, if the US fell off the cliff, it would be a major contraction in the US. I don't think we'll see this, but we may see a fairly messy political process, an increase mm. in uncertainty. Again, investors getting scared, capital moving around. I think these are the two main risks. And Latin America, like everybody else, is exposed to that, right? And precisely, and lastly, Latin America, uh, from your perspective, uh, uh, is it doing a good job uh, trying to shield themselves from these potential risks? Or, or, or they should be doing anything or something else? I think they are doing great. I mean, in the sense that now, first, Latin America has done very well through the crisis, and it was due to, to good policies before. Uh, and now I think they are dealing with the crisis uh, fairly well. I mean, some countries are seeing a decrease in exports. They are reacting to it to the extent that they can through uh, an increase in domestic demand. Uh, countries are dealing with capital flows, I think, in a very responsible way. In some cases, they are using capital controls to decrease the volatility. But in general, I think Latin America get gets a, a good pass. I mean, it has done very well, has handled the, this fairly complex international environment uh, very well. Uh, your perspective for 2013 for Latin American uh, economies? Look, they, they seem to, uh, again, uh, be very resilient. Uh, have, they have you know, the fiscal tools, the monetary tools to actually, if there was a decrease in exports, to do something. Uh, so I think that they, you know, basically we we, we forecast fairly high growth, not as high as in the past, but fairly high, and we're fairly confident. What about uh, the economic perspective for the United States, given the different two options in the elections? I mean, does the IMF have any consideration or reconsideration, depending on who's going to be running the White House? No, the policy is the same, no matter what, who wins. I mean, basically, there has to be more fiscal consolidation uh, than in the medium term than is currently uh, planned. And basically at this stage, there is no medium term uh, fiscal consolidation plan. There has to be one, whoever wins. Uh, that's, that's of the essence. Of course. Olivier Blanchard, Chief Economist from IMF. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.